Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a new series or a new list of videos um, where I talk to you guys about different types of seeds uh, based on grouping of seeds, so tomatoes, etc., and so forth, that you may want to grow in your garden. Now, I'm going to go through odd ones, I'm going to go through common ones, and I'm going to go through the uses for them. So, which ones are used for canning tomato sauce versus salsa and all that fun stuff. However, I will say, there was one comment on the onion video done by Johnny Chicken or Chicken Johnny. I'm probably messing that up somehow but he actually uh, put his zone, so he's a 5B, and then he listed all the different types of onions he likes to grow, when he likes to start them indoors, how he transplants them outside, and it was just this beautiful write-up about his zone. And I want to encourage you guys to do this. If you have tomato varieties that you enjoy and you wanna share and you have specific ideas about how to start these things, please comment them down below. Don't forget to put your zone in with that comment because when he did that, a huge portion of people from 5B actually connected with that comment and said, thank you so much, I needed this and I want to drive this home. While I have studied soil science for 14 years now, I want to tell you something. I am not a god. I am not the absolute pro. I do not know everything. The real professionals of gardening in your zone are the people that garden in your zone. Nobody on this planet is going to know the intricacies of the zone you're gardening in other than other people who garden in that zone. Bottom line. And it just, that is the soil, that is the absolute proof. No one knows your situation better than you do. So with that being said, I want you guys to start those conversations. That was the purpose of this channel in its absolute infancy. And it's still my goal with this channel is to start the conversation and give options of pros and cons and ideas to help you guys decide what's going to work best for you. What I tell you is only, only to help you decide what's going to work in your situation. Some of the things I say will not work for you and you will know that and that's what's important. So let the comment box, box fill up. If you guys have brilliant ideas about how to start any of these crops, in your area please help out your fellow canadian garden soil scientist nerdy people out and uh, let them know so i will be leaving links down below for all these varieties we're going to be starting off with tomatoes today i have a, ra a rating system for this so i'm going to be giving a flavor rating out of five canadian flags I'm going to be giving a visual rating because honestly, I think that's incredibly important when it comes to tomatoes, especially with like the glamorous Instagram shots lately. So that'll be out of five Canadian flags. And then I'll be giving a texture rating because when you're eating these raw or you're putting them on a sandwich, texture matters. I don't care what anyone says, texture matters. So that'll also be out of five Canadian flags. Okay. so. The first one being beef steak. These are hands down my favorite. They can be used in salsa, typically. It's like the number one way to use these. They can be on the flavorless side. So I only gave them four out of, out of five for flavor. Visually, they're very boring. While they are giant tomatoes, they're just visually, they don't have lots of uh, different colors to them and they don't have lots of ribbing to them. So I give them only a three. And then texture wise, um, they can be a little bit on the watery side. However, they have a very cellulose, cellular uh, type texture to them. So for that, I give them a rating of three. The next one is ox heart. Now, ox heart literally looks like an ox's heart. Like, can we please look at this thing? It's crazy um, to me. It, it looks like a bleeding heart kind of and this one is great great fresh or 
in sauces. And the reason for that is it actually kind of has a sweet taste to it. So typically if you're making a tomato sauce, I know I have lots of Italians following right now, but um, there is sugar usually in tomato sauce. And so sweetness, while you don't taste it in your tomato sauce, is a huge deal when selecting your tomatoes. So I give this a value of five for flavor. It is it is on the sweet side. It's very fruity tasting. Visually, I give it a three, mostly because it's just red, which I find boring. But the texture, I do give it a four. It is a very saucy texture, um, and it doesn't have a um, it doesn't have like a cellular or a watery texture to it. It is very saucy. Roma tomato, which is very very popular for tomato sauces. Again, it's just that sweet flavor to it. Visually, I find them incredibly boring looking. I gave them a one because they are just so boring. Texture wise, I'm not much for eating these raw, so I only gave them a two. But when they're put into a sauce, I mean, their texture value, it goes up for me. So I mean, they're not a raw favorite, but they are a sauce favorite. Cherry tomatoes, you, you ought to grow cherry tomatoes. I'm sorry. They're great fresh in salads. They're not used for really anything much else. But flavor city, I gave them a four. They usually have kind of a, um, if you if you eat them fresh, they have more of a citrusy almost flavor to them. But if you wait, then they have more of a tomato flavor to them. So it all depends on when you decide to pick them. Visually, I give them a one. I find them boring looking. And texture wise, I think it's just like perfect. It's like a gusher of goodness. So I give it a four. Black Crim. Now these ones, this is where we start getting cool. They are best for fresh eating relish or canning whole. So they're not a sauce type um, tomato whatsoever. They have more um, density to them. They're not watery and they, they typically have a little bit more structure, which is what makes them so good for canning whole or using in a relish. Now, I don't know what these would look like in a relish because they're black, like they're like a deep purple. So and they might be really weird in that sense, but I think it would be really interesting to see. They're described as sweet and salty by a huge portion of people, which I will agree with. They, they do taste a little bit salty. And I like it. I like that sweet salty vibe. So I gave it a flavor rating of four. Visually, I gave it a five because I love purple. And texture wise, I gave it a four because I do like a little bit uh, denser of a tomato. I like something with a little bit more crunch to it. Very similar to um, beef steak when it comes to size. Sometimes depending on the variety you get, but they can be a smaller something closer to maybe an ox heart or a Roma. Brandy wine, just sounds cool. Sounds cool, doesn't look cool though. It is a classic looking tomato that is meant for fresh eating. And if you are all about the tomato sandwiches, then Miss Brandy wine is the choice you want to go with. Flavor wise, it is a five. It is a very rich flavor, huge range. It just makes your taste buds sing. Visually, it's a one because it's just a red, boring tomato. Texture wise though, it is a four because it is a meatier texture to it. Cherokee purple. Flavor is refreshingly acidic. I've never grown this one before. Refreshingly acidic. Let me know in the comments below if you've had the Cherokee purple before and what refreshingly acidic means. Um, these are used for fresh eating. They do say you can can them. Texture is two because from what I've read, it has a very thick skin to it, which I would find probably undesirable in my sense, but visually it's a four because it's very, very cool looking. Gold metal, this one, I love this one so much. It is big and it's got a pumpkin vibe to it, which I am so, I love it. It is a sweet flavor, so I put it at a five because that is what I'm looking for in the tomato, hands down. Texture-wise, it is considered melt in your mouth, quote unquote, which mm, just, ah, uh, 
I can just think, I can visualize it all way already. Visually, obviously, I already drummed it up. It's clearly a five on that side. Who doesn't want a big pumpkin tomato? I do. Chocolate stripes. Again, very interesting looking uh, tomato. It is only for fresh eating. It is not considered acidic enough to can. So big warning there. Do not can this tomato. It is not meant to do so. I'm assuming um, without the high acid that there could be some risks involved with canning that. So that is kind of meh. But they can grow up to one pound in weight. One pound. That is huge. You need a sling for that thing to stay on the vine. Though. Like, oh my goodness. They are sweet tasting. So they're getting a, a five there. And they, texture wise, is considered perfect. From what I've read, it is not at all runny. It is considered perfect. Visually, it is a five because chocolate stripe in the same word with tomato is beautiful. That was my Italian impression. Green zebra. So I've seen these at Early's in Saskatchewan. It is tangy and sweet, and they are both good fresh or pickled. Texture is a three, because I do think they have a, they have a little bit harder of an outside. And visually they're a three, because for whatever reason, my brain cannot accept green peppers. I just, I don't, not for me but could be for somebody. The zebra side though, like the, the darker green going through it, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna screw this up. So Italian folk listening, I know you're out there. Costoluto Genovese. I'm French, that's as good as it can. It's considered Italian royalty. It has acidic taste. It is both good, good fresh or cooked. The flavor is considered to be a four because of that acidic taste. I guess that's what you're after. And the texture is full. However, it is sort of runny. So it got knocked down a few pegs in my, my world because it's a three. However, visually it is a five. The downfall to this tomato is that you would need to grow it in either a high tunnel, a low tunnel, or a hothouse in Canada because it needs heat in order to develop its flavor, which makes sense, especially when you start getting into those acidic flavors and tastes, you generally need heat in order to make those form. It's a similar, similar to peppers, right? So mm, that's lame, but they do look cool. Ah, another freaking Italian word, uh, re ricey tomate, tomato. So this one is insane looking. You tear it apart one piece at a time. However, the flavor is apparently just absolutely horrific. It is sour, literally sour. That's all I ever read anywhere was sour. I give it visually a five because it looks insane and the texture is considered meaty. So it's supposed to be very, very hard inside um, and it's supposed to be meaty, meaty texture. So cool looking tomato. You tear apart and eat one piece at a time, but it is considered sour. So put this one in there because of the story. I'm a story person. If a fruit or a vegetable comes with a story, it's getting in the list. It is called the mortgage lifter. How cool is that? So the story behind this is that this was developed by a gentleman who it then apparently became very popular. If you guys know that like the the true story and the name of the guy please put it down below but essentially my understanding is he became very rich off of selling the seeds from this thing and the tomato itself is apparently pretty big and now it's, it's a big deal all around the world so it is perfect for uh tomato paste it is a very tomato it's just the flavor is tomato that's essentially what it said it is very meaty it is a four uh, for flavor for that. It's a one for visual because I find it very boring looking, but <laughs> it's a type of beefsteak tomato and it can grow up to four pounds, four pounds. That's like the size of Jack on my lap. I don't know, it, my brain, my brain just can't. So I hope this helps you guys out. I hope you found it 
fun, I did personally researching all these. This is a great video for beginner or someone more advanced. Let me know if you've tried any of these, especially some of these really bizarre ones. Let me know if you've done a mortgage lifter that's gotten to be four pounds. I would really, really, really like to know what did you have to feed it to get it that large? Dear Lord. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you're into tomatoes. This is honestly one of my favorite uh, crops to grow. Hands down, I love growing tomatoes. I will talk to you guys next time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.